purple. Jesus' invocation of the lilies of the field, along with Alice Walker's The Color Purple, offers us a beautiful and insightful metaphor into God's grace. This is particularly relevant in times when worry is not only present, but indeed warranted. And I'm talking about those sometimes moments when you cannot easily discern the where's, the what's, the why's, and especially the, the how's. Jesus knew the pressures of the poor and oppressed in occupied first century Palestine in the same way that God knows the pressures that we are facing in our homes and in our communities and in our nation and in our world. Worry sometimes is warranted when we see the war and conflict happening all across the globe in Ukraine and beyond, or where immigrants at the southern border are not treated like humans but as pawns, or when gun violence runs unchecked within our communities and neighborhoods, or where there's people who lack access to proper housing or adequate health care, or those amongst us who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Worry is sometimes warranted when you look at the witness of the church and see the gospel diminished to slogans and to some folks yelling about banning books and classes, but remaining silent in the face of anti-black and anti-Semitic violence or systemic injustice or the threat felt by those within the LGBTQ plus community or theologically justifying the petulance in our politics that gives voice to our violence and deepens divisions and cynically separates us one from another. And sometimes a warranted worry takes on personal dimensions, like when one begins to question if they are ever going to get through the problems that they are facing, like Seely in the color purple. Sometimes you can't help but wonder if you can overcome the forces in life that seem to be conspiring to extinguish your light, to dampen your joy, or put a ceiling on your own sense of possibility. These types of worries are real. And these natural feelings of anxiety and angst that arise from the concerns of life affirm our humanness. However, I believe that when Jesus says, do not worry, we are not being taught to act as if what is happening is not. No. We're being taught to not get stuck in worry, to not allow that worry to pitch a tent within our minds such that we co-sign a sense of separation from the God who is abundant in his presence. We're being taught, as a, as a folk singer once said, that don't let the devil ride you, right? Why? Because, because if we quiet ourselves long enough, then we can begin to hear a truth that emerges from the midst of worry. We begin to hear the whisper of Shug Avery in that field of wildflowers, or Jesus' voice on that mount long ago saying, consider, consider. Now to all of my metaphysicians up in here, when I was going through practitioner training with Reverend Deborah Johnson, I, I learned about how our thoughts are prayers, right? We talked about affirmative prayer and the law of mind, the, 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 the creative power of our thoughts. We, we, we learned about how what we think and how we speak, right, empowers what we bring as truth into our experiences. I, I learned how to guard my heart, but I also learned how to mind my mind, right? And the word consider, it, it means to think carefully. So my heart's ears picked up. When I, when I heard the master teacher saying, consider. And so I say to you today the same, that when faced with worries, consider. Just like Shug Avery did. Consider the flowers of the field in the purple shade of God's grace by knowing, as my spiritual mentor said, just because things are out of your control doesn't mean that they're out of God's control. Amen. That indeed... This world can seem crazy, but as Howard Thurman said, the, the contradictions of this life are not final. That in the end, there's a unity of life that is law and, and unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word, as Martin Luther King says. <laughs> 